Karen Bryan for M. Mahid. I'm here with Michael Chiesa, victorious tonight over Anton Kuivanen at UFC 157. You got another choke. You're undefeated. How good does that feel? Uh, it feels great. Uh, the fight pretty much unfolded the way I thought it would. So uh, nothing really caught me by surprise. The thing is, he was resistant to it at first. You had to try a few times till you sank it in. You know, I'm very persistent. Uh, a lot of fighters have, you know, their own niche. You know, like I said, uh, Sam Cecilia, he has his big right hand. Cody McKenzie has his guillotine. You know, uh, I'm like a Jansport backpack, man. I'll jump on it and, you know, I'll find a way to finish. I'm very persistent with it. I think a lot of other guys are afraid to burn their arms out. But, uh, you know, if I take your back, there's a very strong chance that I'm going to submit you. So, you know, uh, when I took his back and I looked up at the clock, I was like, oh, I got four minutes. Kind of, I, I kind of had a feeling it was over. Let's talk about Cecilia and Cody McKenzie. Those are still your main training partners? Yeah, absolutely. We got a tight little crew in Spokane. Uh, I got Cody McKenzie, Sam Cecilia, uh, Lyle Beerbaum, who's a strike force vet. Fancy pants. Fancy pants. Everybody knows fancy pants. Um, so I got a tight crew, some also up and coming pros. But, uh, you know, now that I'm out of camp and uh, I'm going to go down to Sacramento, uh, work on my skill set. But I'll always do my camps back home in Spokane. You know, I got to stay close to home where my, my chiropractors, my strength coaches, you know, where my team is at. So, you know, just I'm just excited that. I was able to, to let this fight happen the way I wanted it to. And when you go to SACTO, you go to the alpha male guys. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> team Faber, uh, you know, that was truly a blessing coming from the show was, uh, you know, being on Faber's team. Uh, whether I wanted it or not, I feel like that I've established a good connection with him and his team. So I will always take advantage of going down to Team Alpha Male and getting the quality training. Let's talk about the fact that your last fight was pushed very late. You got sick. What happened to you? And, and was that something that... You know, you, you thought, oh, I can push through this and fight, and then you realize it just really was that, you know, so bad, or what happened? Yeah, I caught an illness, and, you know, I was going to push through it. I, the thoughts to pull out of the fight didn't even question, you know, didn't even pop in my head, but I had to call the UFC and be like, hey, you know, this happened, I need to take this medication. And they were just like, you know, Dr. D called me and was like, no way, man, I can't let you fight. You know, you're going to start cutting weight, and, there, you know, it doesn't matter how good a shape you're in, you're not going to win that fight with, with the condition and the cards you were dealt. So. You know, it was very unfortunate, and the, the thing that was that hurt for me was that was a hometown fight. That was, you know, in Washington State, in Seattle. I had a lot of people there, and, uh, you know, but everything happens for a reason, so I'm not upset about it. I, I think ultimately I was supposed to be here on this card fighting with Uriah and uh, being a part of history. I mean, this is a historic card. Um, I wish I could have fought in Seattle, but I think everything happens for a reason. So you're down with women fighting in the UFC? Absolutely. I mean... Women are world-class, they're world-class athletes. Ronda's a bronze medalist in the Olympics in judo. Uh, you know, she deserves her recognition. She's a very good fighter. Misha Tate's a good friend of mine. Uh, her and Ronda had a good little scrap until, you know, I mean, I, I've never seen a guy do what Misha did. You know, most guys tap to an armbar and, you know, Misha went out on her shield and uh, I think the, uh, Ronda and Misha are a testament to the fact that females do belong in the UFC and uh, you know it's the evolution of the sport. Very nice and last question is of course the it's got it's the beard do you have a name for it I mean and how much and you know the, I thought there was a rule that I want to touch it so badly I'll, I'll, <laughs> it's just do you, do you have a pick for that I mean how do you take care of this thing really? I have a brush for it at home <laughs> yeah. you know because sometimes if I take a shower before I go to sleep I'll fall asleep and I'll wake up and it'll be like sucked my face you know I got to give it a little fluff but it's just a tradition I kind of started uh, you know once I kind of started growing facial hair I got sick of having to shave before every practice so I was like you know what I'm just gonna let it go until after my fights I didn't ever think that I was gonna be able to grow this much facial hair but this is about five or six months so this isn't people are like oh does that happen overnight I'm like no far from it this is like you know five six months of, of endurance and it's just for fun it's not for the strategic element of them not really knowing where the end of your chin is no you know people are like oh does that pad your face from a punch and I just want to be like hey let me tape some <laughs> cotton to your face and punch you tell me how much padding that really provides if anything it's an advantage for your opponent it's a bigger target it catches punches you know if a guy has a clean shave you could slick a little grease on there and let some punches slide off I mean you know, that's what I always tell people. Let me put some cotton on your face and punch you and tell me how much padding that really provides. It's a good answer. Well, Michael, congratulations to you. And, you know, I, I hope to see you fight more frequently. I know last year, yeah, you weren't as busy. So I'm imagining you want to be more busy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, this was part of my dream is to be here and fight in front of a, a big crowd. I've been waiting for this moment since I was 17 years old. But um, I have big goals. I want to be a world champion. I want to go 3-0 this year. I want three fights. One down, two to go. I'm going to win two more fights this year. I'm going to start the next year as a contender. And I, I really mean that from my heart. I want to be a world champion. And uh, I think people need to take me seriously because if you watch what happened on The Ultimate Fighter, if you watch what happened tonight, I'm persistent. You know, I might not be the prettiest fighter. 
I know it's ugly, but I'll find a way to win, and someday I'm going to get my hands on that belt. Nice. And if you could ask for an opponent, who would you pick? Anybody. Just whoever's going to move me up the ladder. I'm not wanting to go call guys out. You know, J Joe Silva's got a plan for all of us. I've expressed to him what my goals are, and, uh, you know, I know that there's guys in the UFC that don't have the same goals as mine. They just want to fight and stay employed, not big risk takers. Me, I'm a risk taker. I want to step up in competition every time. Uh, I'm here to test myself, and in order to become a world champion, that's what you have to do. Throw yourself to the fire, you know? Well, congratulations. You're looking great every time we see you, and uh, just wishing you the best of luck in the future. And you're looking great as always. Dang, Thank girl. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thanks. I had to. You're great. I'm Michael Maverick Chiesa, and you're watching MMA Heat.